Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for bringing us today again to your throne of grace. That we may look to the beauty of your holiness and hear your voice ministering to us through the Holy Spirit from your word. We want to look into your word that we will open the eyes of our understanding that we may be able to learn the truth from your word, apply to our life, and experience the blessings of obeying your word. Lord, we thank you for your wonderful message you have been showing to us. Thank you for keeping us safe and showing your grace and goodness till now. And making it possible for us to come together again today. That you will be with us. And we also enable others whom you have chosen to join us for fellowship and for learning the word, to meditate on the truth of your word, and to enhance our spiritual growth, and also to strengthen our inner man, that we may be able to face any kind of problems, challenges in our lives, for your glory, and that we may be able to do great things for you, O Lord, to build your kingdom. And we commit this day, again, this meeting into our hands, that you will bless us in the precious table. I will all and save you, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, today we wanted to discuss about how to turn all our problems into challenges that we can become champions. So how to be a champion? Now, before I go to show you the actual scriptural principles of how to turn our problems into challenges, taking the example of David and Goliath. Let me show you a video of how people have problems in life, in the world, but then how they are taking them as a challenge without being disappointed or discouraged in life. And uh, people have terrible problems in life which we do not have. And uh, at some time, we are not able to face our problems and we are worried or uh, discouraged. But then people in the world have tremendous problems, but they are taking them into challenges, opportunities to develop their lives in a different way. Um, this short video helps us to see the problems that people can have. And... Uh, So uh, I have to first to do the screen sharing. I have to do the screen sharing, then only you'll be able to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Now this, this boy has no hands and no legs, but then, uh, see, he was born without limbs. But then how he is surviving and uh, you know, enjoying life like a normal child. Now he is playing games, video games like any other boy. Or even just after she gave birth. Though he does not have both hands. And, uh, and his mother is talking about. Previously, the family received financial aid from the government. One of five children, Taya's grown-up brothers live in other parts of the country, 
So his parents are left alone to care for Tao goes to a small special needs school in Panawanga and is excelling. Using his mouth to write, Tayo also uses his chin to take part in his favorite pastime. Video games. Habis mau sekolah, berangkat sekolah, habis mandi main PS, udah dijemput sama ibu guru. Ya, sekolah, udah sekolah main lagi PS gitu. Ya, ya. Setiap hari masih main PS itu habis datang sekolah. Although he faces more challenges than the average 11 year old, he's determined to make the most out of his life. Now, what we see here, right, we see the problems a boy has, but how he is able to change, you know, turn them into challenges and go to school as a normal boy and study and play the video games and all this. And now, Hello. let us see how to be a champion. Do you see the screen? Yes. 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 Do you see the screen? I can't read it though. Yes. The principles that we are, you know, are learning is how to fight for victory with courage, like David. So we, we have seen last time the principle from the life of Joseph about all temptations. How to flee from temptations with the biblical convictions. Now we see how to have courage like David to fight for victory, to be a champion. Raising up champions who, to, for, who fight today's Goliaths. Raising up champions who fight today's Goliaths. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we have the story of David uh, fighting Goliath. And Goliath challenges the Israelites in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17 from the beginning verses. And then uh, when we come to verse 23 onwards, we see here David's uh, conversation with his brothers and others in the army. He comes to the battlefield, he brings food for his brothers who are in Saul's army. And then uh, he, he, he sees Goliath coming there and challenging in the Saul's army and abusing the God of Israel. Now, when people looked at him, when Israel people looked at him, what he saw in Goliath was the problem. What, when they looked at Goliath, they saw the problem. The whole Saul's army was uh, fleeing from him. They were so afraid that they could not stand. They were going away from the battlefield uh, because when they looked at Goliath, they saw the giant. And with these statistics, uh, that was a problem to them that he was 10 feet tall. His breastplate weighed 200 pounds. His spear is eight foot long. His spear head is 25 pounds of iron, and uh, he was a warrior since his youth. And he was challenging God's army for 40 days and nights. Now, this is the great problem for Saul's army to face Goliath. 
None of them were prepared to come forward, and Goliath was challenging for one man to come forward and fight with him. No need for the whole army, Goliath said. One of you can come forward and fight with me. And uh, King Saul promised to those, to the one who goes and fights with Goliath and wins the victory, he will give his daughter to marry. And so there was a great reward for those who go and fight with Goliath. And this information, David, the shepherd boy, he gets from the people in the battlefield. He checks with two groups of people. And then his brothers were against him. They were grumbling. And they wanted him to go back to his work, taking care of their father's sheep. But he came to bring food for them. But then it so happened when he looked at uh, this giant Goliath, David saw the challenge. You see the perspective that we have in life, that when we have problems, how we look at them. And here we see how David looked at the, the problem of Goliath and he saw the challenge, not problem. Now David looked at Goliath and he saw the challenge. But when the Saul's army looked at Goliath, they saw the problem. And that is what happens in our lives. Everything that happens in our lives, if we take it as a problem, then we fear and we feel discouraged, disappointed, all right? And then we feel defeated, that we think, oh, we cannot overcome this problem. But then on the other hand, when we have a different perspective and to look at it as a challenge, you see now David took it as a challenge because Goliath was challenging God's faithfulness to his people. And Goliath's gods are challenging only true God, Jehovah. So when Yahweh is being challenged, David got very jealous about it. David felt the challenge for himself. And, and Goliath's challenge is directed toward any one man to respond. And so David took it for himself, that he is challenging him also to go and fight and to win the war on behalf of Yahweh, their only true God. Now, David was a man of, you know, such a jealous feeling for God. And he loved God so much that we can understand that he could feel it when he had the challenge of Goliath. And Goliath was challenging God's people 40 days and nights, all right, searching about, searching about the army before the king, the Saul's army, but nobody was. Uh, you know, ready to go and fight with Goliath. In that situation, we see how David took it as a challenge. So Goliath as a challenge, but the whole army of Israel took it as a problem. Now, this, this is very important in our lives and how we look at situations in our life as problems are as challenges. And this is where our victory or defeat lies. Now, Goliath is keeping the proper perspective. What Goliath means to us today? What Goliath means to us today in our practical daily life? The Goliath of materialism, the money. Now we have the challenge of handling money, earning, or spending, saving, whatever. So the challenge of materialism. And many people are hurting money, all right? They're running after money. They want to be wealthy, richest people, all right? And that desire of covetousness, uh, people have this problem of materialism, all right? It's a Goliath of materialism. Many people are not able to overcome. And the Goliath of immorality, the body, less, all right? Many people living in immorality, all right? Lack of moral life, the Goliath of immorality, and are dealing with their own body. The Goliath of entertainment, all right, today's entertainment world is very big. Now we have a multimedia, uh, now the technology is uh, providing very cheap entertainment and that is coming into our hands. In our childhood, you know, if you have to see a movie, you have to go all the way to the city uh, in the Bajar area where theaters are, all right? And on the way, when you are going to see the movie and some fellow in your area will know We'll find out they are going to watch a movie and he will come and tell your family. And so you will have a problem. And so some of people will escape and go and secretly watch the movies in the theaters. 
But today that is not necessary. Because today you have in your hand in the mobile phones, you can see anything you want. All right. And so entertainment is like a Goliath that we have to face and handle and win over. And it's very difficult for many people to choose the entertainment and the Goliath of traditionalism, but culture. Many people have become slaves to traditions or culture. All right. They will do everything as a culture. All right. In Africa, they have polygamy, marrying many wives. They say it is their tribal culture. Even after they come to the Lord Jesus, they are not willing to change. All right. They are still continuing in their old, ancient tribal culture. They have become slaves to their culture, traditions. And today, many people have the traditions, even in the churches. All right. In the family life, it's like a Goliath that we have to take it as a challenge to overcome and to win over it. And the Goliath of New Age philosophy. Now today the New Age philosophy is spreading all over and many young people are not interested in God or spiritual life. They are following the New Age philosophy. The Goliath of humanism. That they don't know God. Man himself is everything. So there is no God apart from man. So man is everything. We don't need God. This is what is the humanism, the humanistic philosophy. So the Goliath of humanism, we have to face and we know. Uh, and so today we have these so many Goliaths that we have to face in our daily life. Now, facing the challenges. Now the promises of victory. Now in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, we have this promise uh, through the life of Apostle Paul. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, by, by the power of God, we can do all things. That's the great promise. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, that Paul says that by the strength that Christ has given me to fulfill the calling he has given me. So God is giving us strength, right? In Romans chapter 8 verse 37, and he gives the list of things that can separate us. And then he says, you know, all these things we are more than conquerors. Right, he speaks about the famine, poverty, he speaks about the nakedness, he speaks about the persecution, and he speaks about all sorts of troubles. And Paul says, In all these things, we are more than conquerors. And in first John chapter 4, verse 4, he says that you have overcome them because who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And that's how first for John encourages. Uh, God's people. So we have these promises of overcoming and gaining victory in our daily battles. The characteristics of champions. What are the characteristics of champions? Now using God-given courage. Now in 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul encourages Timothy and Timothy to stir up the gift that is given to him and not to be timid. He was timid and he was very fearful, young man, very soft. And Paul encourages him thus to stir the gift that God has given him, to fan it to fame, and to put into use what God has given to him, not to fear, all right, and to have courage. And that's how we see in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and Deuteronomy chapter 31, and Joshua chapter 1, and also 1 Chronicles. And also in Ezra chapter 10, we read about the courage of God's people. What is the courage? In Hebrew, it means to be stout, alert, bold, solid, firm, persistent. Now, all these words explain what is courage. To be stout, and to be alert, not to be lazy, not to be dull. To be bold, not to be fearful. To be solid, not to be light or shallow. To be firm, not to be shakeable to be persistent, not to give up. So courage helps us to have all the positive qualities. How to cultivate courage? Now the characteristic of champions is to have courage. How to cultivate courage? Number one is by waiting on the Lord. When you waiting, when you wait on the Lord, the Lord will give you courage. So you should not fear when you, when you uh, face any problems or challenges in life. You have to wait on the Lord in prayer. And when you wait on the Lord in prayer, God empowers you with courage. And also number two, by the Holy Spirit. 
And God has given us the spirit of power. Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1. That God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, discipline and love. And so God has given us the Holy Spirit to empower us. The Lord said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be filled with power and you'll be my witnesses. And to the uttermost part of the world, not only in your local place, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, but also in the uttermost part of the world. So the power of the Holy Spirit will enable us to have the courage and to overcome any challenges in life. Number three is daily victories. Now David reminds King Saul, when King Saul asks him, how can you go and fight him? Because you are not trained. You are only taking care of your father's sheep. You never fought in any battle. And you cannot even wear the battle armor. Then David says that when I have been going and I faced lion and bear and tore them, I killed them. And so why can't I face this Goliath, this giant? He's nothing. So David had daily victories in his private life. It is not a one-time victory that he was seeing, but he had daily victories in his life. And therefore, he has the courage to face giant Goliath. Now, we need to have victories every day. We need to see how God is giving us victory even over small problems in our lives, small challenges. For some people to get up from the bed is a challenge. Sometimes I feel it in the morning to get up from the bed is difficult. When I go to bed very late in the night, and that time I'm taking it as a challenge to see how I can get up early, as early as possible. And so we need to have daily victories over even small challenges, problems in our lives. And then when we face bigger problems, bigger challenges, we will, be, we will have courage to face it. And therefore, that's how we can cultivate courage in our lives. Number four, the promises of God. The promises of God's word, they give us courage. That's why when you read Deuteronomy chapter 31, Joshua chapter 1, Isaiah 41, and so on. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 31, Joshua chapter 1, Moses was encouraging, and God was encouraging Joshua uh, to be courageous, not to fear, because now Moses is no more. Now you don't fear. You be courageous. Take a stand, and I'll be with you. God encouraged Joshua. So God's promise in his word gives us courage. Now that's how we need to cultivate courage. Champions are not influenced by the circumstances, opinions, or criticisms of others. Now we in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 28 to 33, we read several obstacles that David faced in facing Goliath. Now his own brothers began to grumble against him and uh, objected here and uh, stopped him from going to fight Goliath. They wanted him to go back to his uh, work of taking care of their father's sheep. Now we will also face obstacles in our way of facing challenges in life. Right, so champions are not influenced by the circumstances or opinions or criticisms of others. People will criticize us, you know, that they will give their own opinions, right, or the circumstances or the situations will be discouraging, but then champions will not be influenced by all these. We see three tests David face, and you will face these three tests. Number one was the Eliab test. The Eliab test is from the relatives. Now in his own brothers, now Eliab was David's brother, he told him, you better go back to your work. Why are you coming here to play, to see the game? You know, as he was, you know, a kind of mocking uh, joke he was making to uh, at, uh, David. David took it very seriously that the giant Goliath was mocking God, abusing God of Israel. But David's brothers, they did not take that. They would have looked at the physical stature of Goliath. They looked at him as a problem, how to face him. But David would look at the other side that this giant Goliath was challenging God himself. And David could not stand it. You know, and so Eliab test is like relatives sometimes will discourage. And that happens. Sometimes they will not cooperate with you. I heard, you know, from some pastors how their wives were not cooperating with them. When some people want to go for ministry, the family may not support them because their thinking will be different. They will have different thinking, all right? 
And so you, we, we will face these kind of problems in our life. Sometimes the relatives will give their opinions against your decisions. Uh, they do not want to risk. They do not want you to take any risk. All right. But champions take risks and they will go forward. And so you will face tests from your relatives. Uh, the secondly, the Saul test. King Saul also told him, see, you never went for battle and you're not able to wear this battle armor. And how can you go and fight with Goliath? Because he's a warrior from his youth. He's well-trained, expert. And so, he, the King Saul, he gave his expert advice to David. So we will have experts, uh, right, stopping us from becoming champions. They will give the expert, you know, suggestions and advice that why you want to do this, why you want to do that. When I started the ministry in Mumbai in 85, some Christian leaders were very discouraging. They said, why you left the job? Why you left the high paying job and why you have to do the ministry? You know, they, they were very discouraging in, instead of encouraging me, uh, appreciating my dedication and commitment when I did not look for money, I did not ask money from anyone. But then they were very discouraging and disappointing. They were giving their expert advice, all right? But I did not take it. I stick to my commitment and calling and by God's grace, I'm what I am today. And so you will take the salt test. Some experts will, the worldly people will give you some advice that don't do this, don't go there, don't do this. When God wants you to become a champion. Number three, the confidence test from within yourself. All right. And David tried the dress and to see whether he can fit that, the battle armor. All right, the soldier dress, whether he could fight with that, but he could not. All right, so perhaps he tried to see how we can have confidence in that, but then his confidence was in God only. Then finally he said, the battle is the Lord's and he will give us a victory. So David's confidence was in God, not in himself. Now the worldly people talk about self-confidence, but David was not having confidence in himself, but he had confidence in God. And this is very important. So self-confidence is not the you know, courage, but only confidence in God will give us courage. That's why we see these kind of three tests we will face in our lives. Sometimes we lack in our confidence to go forward, all right? To, to attempt to get things for God, all right? To expect to get things from God. And our champions are not influenced by circumstances, opinions, or criticisms of others. This is very important. To sum up, how did David respond to Goliath's challenge? How did David respond to Goliath's challenge? Now we have these five principles that David followed. Courage. Now in uh, chapter 17, verse 37. Chapter 17, verse 37. Now, what David says here, that the Lord who saved me from the claws of the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. Now, David had the courage to fight with the lion and bear. And he gave this courageous statement saying, that the Lord will save me because he saved me from the lion and bear. David had the courage, the conviction of courage and the confidence. All right. David has such a confidence that if God had saved me from bear and the lion, and he will definitely save me from this Philistine. And David had this confidence. This is very important in our lives. And Paul also had confidence. He said that a good work God has begun in our midst. He will continue with till he comes. In Philippi chapter 1, he was encouraging the believers at Philippi, saying that the work God has begun in your life, the good work, the salvation, he will continue and complete it one day. So you don't have to worry about it, how we are going to continue, how we are going to complete. It's all to do with the confidence that we have in God. And also in Philippi chapter 4, verse 13, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Paul's confidence in Christ's strength that he can do everything. Though he was in prison, but he was content with what God has given him. And he said that I can, 
I learn to be content with whatever I have. And so I can do all things because Christ strengthens me. The confidence in Christ that Paul had. <clears throat> Number three, the conviction that David had. Chapter, first Samuel chapter 17 verse 26. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the man, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? He demanded. What about those few sheep you are supposed to be taking care of? I knew, I knew about your pride and dishonesty. You just want to see the battle. Now, you see how David's brothers were right uh, uh, take, I mean, looking at him. I read verse 28. Now verse 26 is, verse 26, David talked to some others standing there to verify the report. What will a man get for killing this Philistine and putting an end to his abuse of Israel? He asked them, when, uh, who is this uh, pagan Philistine anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Now the conviction that David had, he said, who is this Philistine to defy the armies of the living God? So he was very jealous for God. Now this conviction is very important. When the whole army of Israel, the king saw, they all looked at Goliath as a problem, his physical stature, right? But then David was looking the other side to his abuse of God, the challenge that he was throwing at God, right, at his honor. That God's name is being dishonored. He said, who is this Philistine to defy the armies of God? So David took it as a challenge to God himself. All right, just like the prophet Elijah took the challenge on Mount Carmel, that the prophets of Baal were challenging the true God, Yahweh. And he took the stand for Yahweh. And he wanted to prove that Yahweh is the living only God. And then he made the prayer. And then he proved the day before hundreds of prophets of Baal. Now we need to be jealous about God, whom we believe. That we need to live the life that, that brings honor and glory to God. We need to be jealous about the God in whom we believe. We need to have the biblical conviction that he is the only living God. We need to be sure of the truth that we believe in. And he is the living God. And so we need to know the truth of God's word. You see, young, you know, such a young boy, David had such a conviction when he was so young and taking care of his father's sheep. And how much we need to have the biblical convictions in our lives. That we need to know the word of God. And we need to believe who God is. And we need to have such strong biblical convictions about God. You know, it is not just believing superficially and when problems come, we give up that faith, all right? Then we talk like other people, all right? We agree with other people. Not that way, you know, the deep convictions that the apostles had, they were willing to lay down their lives for their convictions, you see? And the deep convictions that Joseph had, Daniel, Shaddaq, Meshach, Abednego had, and they were willing to even suffer and die for the Lord. And they were willing to be thrown into the fire and thrown into the den of lions, Daniel. And of such convictions they had about the God in whom they believed. And what is our conviction? You know, many people today are easily compromising with the world. When there are problems, they will agree with the people. You know, why to face the problem? Simply agree with others. We need to take a stand. And so this is what the Bible says. We need to speak the truth in love, the Bible says. We have to speak the truth in love when we have biblical convictions. All right? Some, some time back, I wrote a series of messages on cultivating biblical convictions. It is very important that we cultivate deep, strong biblical convictions. And the David's conviction about, 
you know, Goliath defying God's armies, and that how he was insulting the God of Israel, uh, drove David to fight with Goliath. And that made him champion. You know, if we don't have deep convictions, we cannot be champions for the Lord. And uh, uh, First Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. Don't worry about a thing. David told Saul, I will go fight this Philistine. No, King Saul was so much worried. He was telling David, you cannot go. You cannot go and fight with the Goliath. He is such an expert and uh, warrior from the youth. And you see how he looks. All right, but David comforted Saul and the army, saying, you don't worry. You don't have to worry about anything. All right. You don't be afraid. I will go and fight with the Goliath, the, the Philistine. You see, now, the comforting attitude David had, he was able to give confidence to other people also, assurance to other people. All right. He was comforting them in their fears. All right. In their disappointment that nobody is there to go and fight with this Goliath. And the whole, I mean, King Saul was expert warrior. And the whole army was well trained, but they were not willing to go and fight with Goliath. You know, sometimes all our Bible knowledge, all our Christian faith, you know, sometimes will not work when some problem comes into our lives. That we, we are filled with fear and discouragement and all right, disappointment that we are not able to face the problem with confidence and courage. And that's why, you see here, how people need comfort and we need to be comforters. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul says that God comforts us in all our sufferings, that we may comfort those who go through similar sufferings in life. So God comforts us so that we be comforters of those who are going through similar experiences. We need to be comforters. We need to look for those who are going through sorrow and pain in life and encourage them and comfort them. Now David, the shepherd boy, is comforting King Saul and the army, saying, you don't worry, I will go and fight with Goliath. David was taking a stand and bringing comfort and encouragement to King Saul and the army. How much comforting we are, how much we are encouraging people in our lives is very important. And also, fifthly, certainty. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. Verse 37. The Lord who saved me from the claws of the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. Saul firmly consented, finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Now, here, for David's certainty of fighting with Goliath, how God will give victory over Goliath, because he had already experienced victory earlier in his private life that nobody knew before. Not even his parents knew that he fought with a lion and bear and killed them. And so David had victory in the private life, and therefore David will have victory in the public life before all. And so he was very certain about the victory. And that's how champions are certain about what they are going to achieve and do in life. We need to be certain about God's plan for our lives. We need to be certain about God's promises for us. And we need to be certain about winning victory over our challenges in life. And this is very important. So through these five spiritual truths, they will respond to Goldia's challenge by courage, with confidence, and with biblical convictions and comforting others and with certainty in his heart and in his, uh, in his talks. The way he communicated to King Saul and the army that he was so certain of victory and therefore uh, they allowed him to go and fight with Goliath. The questions for personal reflection. What are the Goliaths you face daily? Now we need to know what are the problems that we can make them as challenges? That we can see the problems we are facing as challenges in life. So what are the Goliaths you face daily? 
how can you overcome that how can you overcome that and now you have to have a plan for this right how many of david's champion qualities do you have now we have seen the champion qualities of david about the conviction about the courage he had right about the comfort about the confidence about the certainty so how many of david's champion qualities do you have how are you able to win your daily battle battles of your mind and heart now every day we have battles in our mind and heart how are you going to win you know because in our mind always there is disturbance always there is some pressure always there is some stress in our minds all right and that is taking away the peace of god and also in our heart emotionally all right sometimes we are disturbed and so how are we going to win over our daily battles of our mind and heart what has been your personal experience with god recently now this is another important question we need to ask ourselves it's not that many years ago you were born again many years ago you have accepted the lord many years ago you came to understand the truth but how is your life now? what 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 has been your personal experience with god recently you know we need to have fresh walk with god and every day new experience with god you know some people's testimony is very old right but they have nothing to share what is happening now recently how their life is being changed from glory to glory how god's word is working in their life how god is working in their life how they are working with god daily yesterday today now that's a, what has been your personal experience with god recently write a brief testimony write a brief testimony about these points and this will help you to boost your all uh, right uh, courage uh, to face challenges in life uh, to become a champion and you will develop this champion spirit in you when you uh, think about all these things and uh, when you count evaluate the champion qualities that you have that david manifested towards the goliaths and uh, we do face these goliaths in our daily lives we see you know it is not uh, perhaps it's not like uh, david uh, face to goliath physically uh, it is not that way but we have to fight so many other battles more powerful than fighting goliath that time today we have a lot of battles with our emotion and with our mind and with the relationships all right in our daily life with the money and also like students have with studies all right families have family problems you know these are all challenges that we are facing every day in our lives it's like facing goliath in our daily lives how are we going to overcome how are we going to win over goliaths in our lives now this is how we turn our problems into challenges the way we look at our problems it all depends on that the perspective that we have that we see everything as a problem and then we fear and we go back you know we don't try to overcome and we fear uh, about defeat and disappointment but then when we take it as a challenge we want to win over it we want to be victorious and god has given us the promise of victory over all the challenges in our lives that we don't have to fear in the name of jesus we can go forward and prayerfully and the power of the holy spirit is available to us god empowered us with the holy spirit and that we can go and win over every challenge in our lives and god wants us to be victorious God wants us to be champions of Christ and that is not to be glorified and that's how the Lord Jesus said father the work you have given to me i have completed all right and then i have glorified you and that's how when we complete whatever god has given to us in completing the work god has given to us we face challenges in life we need to overcome we need to face the challenges when you face challenges you become a champion that's so goliath was challenging israel because goliath was a champion and therefore david took up the challenge because david was a champion and now challenge is not thrown to cowards challenge is for champions that that's what the goliath said if there is any champion among you come and fight with me and david took it up as a champion 
we need to make ourselves champions for Christ, that we win over the life's battles, that we become victorious in our day-to-day lives by God's grace and by God's glory. God bless his word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you for the victory you have promised in your word through Christ. Christ has won the victory for us on the cross by defeating the Satan, by defeating sin, canceling sin, by defeating the world. The Lord, that he has finished everything for us. And today we have the victory in our hands. We have the victory in our lives that we can overcome any kind of challenge that we face in our lives. We only need to take a stand for you, Lord. We have to stand on the weekly ground, the experience of victory you have promised to your people. Like David, give us the courage we need, give us the confidence we need, give us the conviction we need, O oh Lord, and the comfort and the certainty that the battle is yours and you will give us a victory. Lord, we thank and praise you that in all the battles of our daily lives that we face, our daily Goliaths, that we may face and we know well that we may not be afraid, that we may not shirk back our responsibilities, but we may go forward in the power of your name, in the authority of your name. As the Holy Spirit empowers us, Lord, help us to go forward to bring glory to your name. We thank you for speaking to us these truths, that we may turn all our problems into challenges and become champions for your glory. We thank and praise you for each one of us, that these truths we may seal to our hearts, and we may keep in our hearts uh, to apply in our daily lives and to overcome our challenges and be victorious and be champions for your name. We thank and praise you. Till we meet again, may your love and grace and the joy and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When we walk with the Lord, <laughs>